Welcome back. In the last video, I elaborated on the Sony A7 III's and related Sony cameras network menu item where you find the necessary features, functions and settings to connect your camera to your smartphone or computer either directly or via a Wi-Fi access point. Continuing in a logical order, I would have to elaborate on the playback menu item today. However, after the last video on the network menu item, I realized that many people are having difficulties connecting their camera to a smartphone. This is particularly annoying when you are in the field and want to do an on-the-fly upload of images or videos to your smartphone and from there to social media for sharing them with your friends or a client. Out in the field, you might not have a Wi-Fi access point or a computer to copy the images and videos the old-fashioned way via a USB cable to your computer and then forward them to friends or clients. However, the weird thing is that connecting your camera to a smartphone often works better in the field than at home. So why is this? Since I'm here to help and to deliver videos that are of real value added to you, I decided to squeeze this video in between the one about the network and playback menu item and help you guys eliminating your connection issues. Pretty much like me, eliminating myself right now. Just to make this very clear at the beginning, the following tutorial is for helping you solving connection issues you might have when trying to directly connect your camera to your smartphone using the camera's own Wi-Fi hotspot and not indirectly via the detour of a Wi-Fi router serving as a Wi-Fi access point. Furthermore, the steps to solve your connection issues provided in this video apply to smartphones running on Android version 8.0 and higher. I cannot guarantee that it works on older Android versions or iPhones, but it's at least worth a try. So what is the root cause of most connection issues? Whenever you activate Wi-Fi on your smartphone with such a new Android version, it starts to search for a Wi-Fi access point from where it can get to the internet. If Android has a choice between two Wi-Fi access points, for example, your camera and your Wi-Fi router, it chooses the router. Why? While the camera creates its own Wi-Fi hotspot when activating it, that one only serves for connecting to the camera, but not for getting into the internet. Hence, the smartphone will connect to your router and not to your camera. What's the conclusion? You have to force your smartphone to connect to your camera and not to any router. Why have I explained this to you? Because I want you to understand why you perform the following steps. Okay, let's get into it. Step one, if you are at home, switch off your router. If you are anywhere else and have already established a connection between your smartphone and a third-party Wi-Fi router that you cannot switch off by yourself, try to get out of the Wi-Fi range of that router. Step two, while it might sound counterintuitive, activate flight mode on your smartphone. Step three, switch on your camera and press the menu button. Go to the network menu item this is the white globe icon in front of a green background. And there you go to the Network 1 page. There you select the Send to Smartphone function and in its submenu you select Send to Smartphone. In the following submenu you choose Select on Smartphone. By doing so you activate Wi-Fi on your camera and a white window with a QR code pops up. Now that the camera's Wi-Fi hotspot is active, the smartphone will be able to find your camera. Step four, activate Wi-Fi on your smartphone. Now a pop-up window with the headline Wi-Fi networks should appear, displaying the name of the camera's Wi-Fi hotspot, something like direct hyphen a four digits number and letter combination, colon ILCE hyphen 7M3. You don't need this at this point, just press cancel. Step five. If you have already tried to unsuccessfully connect your camera to your smartphone before, your smartphone might have saved some corrupt Wi-Fi login data. This step is to erase potentially corrupt Wi-Fi login data due to those earlier attempts. For doing so,
go to settings on your smartphone and from there to connections where you choose Wi-Fi. Next to Wi-Fi Direct, you press the three points in the upper right corner, which opens a little pop-up window where you select Advanced. In the new window that appears, you choose Manage Networks. Under Current Network, you now should find your camera's Wi-Fi hotspot name, i.e. Direct hyphen a four digits number and letter combination colon ILCE hyphen 7M3. Press on it and then you press forget. This erases the potentially corrupt login data your smartphone has saved for your camera. Now the smartphone's memory is cleaned and we can establish a proper connection. Step 6. Switch off Wi-Fi on your smartphone. Step 7. Cancel the white window with the QR code on your camera and with that inactivate its Wi-Fi hotspot. Step 8. Switch off your camera, wait 30 seconds and then switch it on again and press the menu button. Go to the network menu item and there go to the network one page. Select the send to smartphone function and in its submenu you select send to smartphone once again. In the following submenu you choose select on smartphone. By doing so you activate Wi-Fi on your camera again and the white window with the QR code pops up. Now that the camera's Wi-Fi hotspot is active, the smartphone should be able to find your camera again. Step 9. Activate Wi-Fi on your smartphone. And again, a pop-up window with the headline Wi-Fi Networks appears. If you now press your camera's Wi-Fi hotspot name in the window, your smartphone asks you for that Wi-Fi hotspot's password. But you don't need to type this in because we're gonna use another way. Just press the left arrow key in the upper left corner and then press cancel at the bottom of the Wi-Fi networks window. Step 10. Activate location settings on your smartphone. While this makes sense for transferring GPS data from the smartphone to the AXIF data of your images taken with your camera, it technically doesn't make sense to establish a Wi-Fi connection. However, Sony's Imaging Edge mobile app requires you to activate location settings Otherwise, it doesn't allow you to establish a connection. Step 11. Open the Imaging Edge mobile app. Even if your camera's Wi-Fi hotspot name is already displayed, don't press on it. Instead, press Scan QR Code of the camera. This activates the app's QR Code scanner. With that one, you just scan the QR code displayed on the monitor of your camera. As soon as this is done, the app should automatically establish the Wi-Fi connection between your smartphone and your camera. Since we have told the camera in step 8 that we want to select the images for download on the smartphone, the Imaging Edge mobile app now displays thumbnails of the images saved on your memory card ordered by date. Pressing on one of the dates, the app displays thumbnails of all images shot on that date. Step 12. For transferring an image from your camera to the smartphone, you either perform a short press on one of the thumbnails to enlarge it and then press the copy icon in the upper right corner, or you perform a long press on a thumbnail which triggers a small pop-up window that offers you two options of which you choose copy. Okay, these were the steps how you initially establish a direct Wi-Fi connection between your camera and your smartphone. For transferring images from the camera to the smartphone in the future, you don't have to perform all these steps again. Just make sure your router is switched off. Then perform the actions from step 8 on your camera, which are to activate the camera's Wi-Fi hotspot. Following these, you activate flight mode on your smartphone and only then activate Wi-Fi on your smartphone and only then location settings, i.e. GPS. Then open the Imaging Edge mobile app and the app should automatically connect camera and smartphone. If not, you don't have to scan the QR code again. It's sufficient to just press your camera's Wi-Fi hotspot name and then the app connects camera and smartphone. If you are wondering now whether you can also transfer videos, and not just images from the camera to the smartphone, the answer is yes. However, if you save images and videos on two separate memory cards, you first have to tell the camera which of the two memory card slots it is supposed to give access to. For doing so, go to the playback menu item and there to page 3, where the header says playback 3. 
There you choose select PB media. My images are saved on the memory card in slot 2 and the videos on the memory card in slot 1. Consequently, I have to select slot 1 here. Now you have to tell the camera whether it is supposed to transfer the full-size video to the smartphone or only a proxy version of it or both. For doing so, go to the network menu item to page 1 where the header says network 1. Select send to smartphone function which opens a submenu with two options. Choose PX sending target, which opens another submenu with three options. If you only want to transfer a video to your smartphone for upload to social media, proxy only is absolutely sufficient. What I choose now for demonstration purposes. Now you are all set for transferring videos from your camera to your smartphone. Switch off your router, then perform the action from step 8 on your camera, which are to activate the camera's Wi-Fi hotspot. Then activate flight mode on your smartphone and only then activate Wi-Fi on your smartphone and only then location settings. Then open the Imaging Edge mobile app and the app should automatically connect camera and smartphone. If not, press your camera's Wi-Fi hotspot name and the app connects camera and smartphone. This time around, thumbnails of videos are displayed. Choose one of them and start the download. This is not the end of this video yet. I have to offer even more. Since you have established the connection between camera and smartphone, you can now also remote control the camera with your smartphone via the Sony Imaging Edge mobile app. Just perform the following steps. If not already done so, switch off your router, activate flight mode on your smartphone, activate Wi-Fi on your smartphone and then location settings. Then press the menu button on your camera and go to the network menu item on page 1 where the header says network 1. There you select control with smartphone which opens a submenu. Choose the first item and set control with smartphone to on. Then you press on connection which activates the camera's Wi-Fi hotspot. Now open the Imaging Edge mobile app on your smartphone and the app should automatically connect camera and smartphone. If not, press your camera's Wi-Fi hotspot name. Now you should see on your smartphone's display what the camera sees through its lens. The type and number of information you see on your smartphone's display and the functions you can use to remote control your camera depend on whether you hold your smartphone in vertical or horizontal position and on the mode you have chosen on your camera, i.e. video mode as shown here or still image mode. Just play around with the app a little bit and you will see how it works. It's pretty intuitive. Okay, this was it. Hopefully I could solve your connection issues. If so, feel free to like and subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell icon if you want to be notified when I upload my next video. See ya!